Donald Trump is ready for war. All-out war with North Korea. A real possibility being put forth tonight by a key member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham told NBC's Today Show, President Trump told him there will be war with North Korea. If you have any doubts that the United States is preparing for war, look at what's happening on the ground. U.S. troops, jets, various forces are arriving to South Korea in an endless stream. Anti-air missile systems are blanketing the airspace. And there are endless war games, simulations, exercises all around uh, North Korea, carried out by the United States, its allies, and, uh, and South Korea. This isn't about scaring North Korea. That can't be done. This is about putting all the pieces into place so that when the final go order comes, everybody's ready. After all, Donald Trump promised to deal with North Korea. Didn't say how. We'll handle North Korea. We're going to be able to handle them. They, it'll be, uh, it will be handled. President Trump's defense secretary recently issued a dire warning about armed conflict on the Korean Peninsula. It will be a war uh, more serious in terms of human suffering than anything we have seen since 1953. Uh, it will involve uh, the massive shelling of an ally's capital, which is one of the most densely packed cities on Earth. It would be a serious, uh, it would be a catastrophic war. Kim Jong-un has a million-man army and has bolstered his infantry and artillery near the DMZ. The Pentagon says much of those forces are in underground bunkers, ready to fire on Seoul at the first whiff of an attack by the U.S. The number of missiles that they have that they could launch into South Korea, they could cause a lot of damage. There are about 28,000 U.S. troops in the region. Experts say the U.S. and South Korea would win that war. But some studies project tens of thousands of people killed in the first couple of days. It would be a very nasty fight. The maneuver forces from the United States and South Korea moving into the north would encounter barriers, a very tough foe. Uh, they have been there forever, so they know the terrain. Donald Trump is ready for war in this case. He's seen the Pentagon's various plans, and in all likelihood, they've already selected one and settled on a battle plan. Uh, the gears are now in motion, and what Senator Lindsey Graham says is, you know, it only goes to reinforce that. If millions have to die, so be it. Are you saying it's okay to use a military option that immediately endangers the lives of millions of people in that region? I'm saying it's inevitable unless North Korea changes. The U.S. has carried out another successful test of an intercontinental ballistic missile. The United States has successfully test-launched an unarmed Minuteman III missile. The ICBM was launched at around 2 a.m. on Wednesday local time from Vandenberg Air Force Base, about 210 kilometers northwest of Los Angeles, California. The U.S. Air Force stated the missile flew more than 6,400 kilometers across the Pacific Ocean and hit a target near the Kwajalein Atoll. This ICBM test comes just days after North Korea test-fired a long-range missile last week and is Washington's fourth such launch this year. Prior to this, the U.S. Air Force said the test aimed at checking the missile's readiness, effectiveness and accuracy. There is What's a military a option to destroy North Korea's program and North Korea itself. He's not going to allow President Trump the ability of this madman to have a missile to hit America. The Pentagon is reporting highly unusual activity near the coast of North Korea. The Defense Department says that they have evidence of an ejection test by a North Korean submarine. The activity comes just days after North Korea successfully launched an ICBM capable of hitting the American mainland. In California, the United States Air Force is prepping to test launch an unmanned ICBM in a show of force to North Korea. Now, one senator is claiming war with North Korea may be inevitable. Vanilla Chan has been following that story, and she joins us for more tonight. Gosh, is there rhetoric out there? Oh, yeah, Ed. Strong words, to say the least, coming out of none other than Senator Lindsey Graham uh, just this morning during an appearance on a morning talk show. Take a look.
the only way they're going to change if they believe there's a credible threat of military force on the table. The Chinese are miscalculating Trump and so are the North Koreans. He's got to choose between homeland security and regional stability. Japan, South Korea, China would all be in the crosshairs of a war if we started one with North Korea. Graham, who is well known for his zingers and bold stance against President Trump, said that the president told him outright that there will be war with North Korea. The caveat is, of course, if the DPRK doesn't change course and end their missile and nuclear programs, though Graham and the president himself have called on China and local allies to take stronger action against the hermit kingdom, it would seem that those calls for help have thus far failed. The president tweeted this a couple of days ago. He said, I am very disappointed in China. Our foolish past leaders have allowed them to make hundreds of billions of dollars a year in trade, yet they do nothing for us with North Korea. Just talk. We will no longer allow this to continue. China could easily solve the problem. And Senator Graham echoes those sentiments, saying that if President Trump has to choose between the security of the United States and the stability of Asia, that basically his hand would be forced. And we heard earlier from the president's harshest critic, possibly, uh, Lindsey Graham. He minced no words that it sounds like another Korean war is in the offing. Ominous words from a senior statesman of his level. His words leaving many Americans very nervous, as you might imagine. Well, the secretary of state did say he's dealing with a short period of time. That doesn't sound very good. Not good. Let's go to Jack Rice tonight, former CIA agent. He can tell us more about this. Uh, Jack, your response to Senator Graham's comments about war. Was it reckless or it was just the absolute truth of what we're dealing with here? Well, it's petrifying, Ed. I mean, in the end, here's what we've got. We've got more than 10 million people in Seoul, 35 miles from the DMZ. We have more than 25 million people in the Seoul metro area. And the fact is, is if there is war, there will not be thousands of people who will die. There will be tens, potentially hundreds of thousands. So let's be clear about the numbers if we're going to go down that path. And yeah, scary. Jack, what about U.S. intelligence, military intelligence, the, the submarine activity, if the Pentagon has detected some type of ejection from a North Korean submarine, who knows whether their stealth ability is there or not. They could park off Los Angeles or off the West Coast and deliver something from a submarine. Isn't that the real concern for the United States right now? Without question. I mean, remember, when we're talking about a nuclear weapon, this is a two-stage piece. What you need is the nuclear weapon itself, and you need the delivery system. If you could actually have a launching space that's just off the West Coast, you could literally hit any city in America. Mm. And that really is the legitimate point that has to be addressed here, and what that means to what Kim is actually doing in North Korea right now. What does your gut tell you, your background tell you, about how much we really know about North Korea, other than seeing these increased efficiency in these tests that they continue to, to take. Well, Ed, here's what we really know at this point. We're looking at at least a dozen nuclear devices that they have. Are any of those small enough to actually put them on the end of a missile right now? Probably not. Is the delivery system close? Yes. We've seen at least two tests within the last 30 days. We've seen some dozen tests since February, more than 18 different missiles since February. That's more than his father and grandfather combined. So, I mean, we know the threat's out there. We know that it's building, and we know, frankly, that it's it's going to get worse. The real question is, if we blink, if we push back, if we turn this into a war, what will a cornered Kim do? And what I just said at the beginning of this, we have 25 million people within 35 miles of that border. This could be a massive annihilation like we have never seen in the history of the world, and that's a fact. Well, what if the United States were to hit North Korea with such incredible force they wouldn't be able to respond? Is that a possibility? No, 
No, it really isn't because you can't take out the entire country. Even if you took out the capital, what you're see seeing is a uh, the moving around of the, whip, uh, the weapons themselves, and so you can't take out all of them, which means they would fire this. L let's be clear. What Kim will do is this, is that this is a guy who's looking at survival at yeah. this point. That's why he sees us. He sees us as an international fear and an internal fear. He's fighting both of those, and I can tell you, I think what will happen here is he has no intention of dying alone. So if he's going to go down, he is going to take as many people with him, and we need to know that. That's part of the calculus. At this reserve forces training session, soldiers are wearing high-tech sensors, which tell them in real time if they've been shot by the enemy. They use guns that fire laser beams, which are detected by the sensors attached to their uniforms. This is part of the Republic of Korea Army's smart training management system which are piloting before plans to expand it to 40 other reserve units. Since we can't use ammunition for combat training, the gear was introduced to help teach combat skills and optimize training outcomes. The new system also uses screens to simulate other aspects of combat. When soldiers shoot at enemies inside digital screens, an infrared camera reports the damage. Tank training exercises using this system have also been developed. The new technology creates a realistic experience of combat through simulated maneuver training for tank and combined arms operations. This technology is expected to reduce safety and noise concerns associated with live ammunition training and have other military applications in the future. Next here to North Korea's dangerous new launch and what we did not know at the time. The commercial airliner filled with passengers flying in the same region. That intercontinental ballistic missile flying higher, farther and longer than ever before. Landing where just minutes before an airliner with more than 300 people on board passed very close to that spot. Here's ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz tonight. While North Korea's test of an ICBM that could someday hit most of the U.S. was sending shockwaves around the world, the more immediate danger we are just learning tonight was right in the area from where the missile was recklessly launched, in busy commercial airspace. As the missile was descending, flight data shows an Air France 777 with 323 people on board traveling from Tokyo to Paris. Less than 10 minutes after the plane passed northwest of Okoshiri Island, the missile fell to earth, landing in the waters near the spot the Air France plane had just flown. The crew of this plane had no idea that they were in danger because the missile was coming in from outer space. If it had broken up in the air prior, it could have endangered a much broader area. Major airlines say they constantly analyze potentially dangerous flyover zones, and Air France says the flight was operated without incident. But the Pentagon has said North Korea's missile launches into busy airspace and heavily traveled seas are done with no coordination. And Martha Raddatz joins me now. Martha, the U.S. has its own missile test planned for tonight in California, but unlike the North Koreans, the Defense Department will actually put out an announcement to warn those in the region. Uh, that's right, David. We always put out those advisories and never launch near flight paths or sea lanes, David. Thank you for watching Right Wing. Your support really does mean the world to me. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day, and I will see you tomorrow.